Hi, it's Midnight Mule and today I thought I would talk about being boring and ironically I'm not in the study being boring, I'm outside today. Uh, so there's two parts to this, one us be seeing boring to NTs but also NTs can seem boring to us but being an ASPE, I can only really talk about my understanding of the ASPE side, but I might throw in a few NT observations while I'm at it. Sorry if the sound's a bit worse than normal in the camera as well. I'm outside. Normally inside I've got a, uh, my laptop with a different camera and its own microphone. Oh, it's not its own, a different microphone. Also, uh, please forgive the camera shake. I'm not used to holding the camera while I'm talking. Now, most of the video you'll not have me in it. I'll be showing other things. Uh, so, to start off, why even am I doing this particular video? Well, <laughs> a few weeks ago, we were in the garden, my wife and I, and I made some comment to my wife along the lines of, it's really interesting how many different types of grass we have in our garden. And she said, I'm not interested. <laughs> Don't bother telling me about it, make a video about it, meaning for YouTube. So I thought, well, all right, then I'll do that. And then, of course, I have to wait for the grass to grow. So now we've got some grass I can show you. So some people may find this interesting. Some people may find it boring. But I will also talk about being boring. So I'm going to talk about being boring and at the same time, hopefully show you different grasses. And if I can in the edit, I would try and put in the names of some of the grasses if I can identify them. I may get some of the names wrong and that's fine. So I'll just tell you a bit about our lawn to start with the house we bought. We live in Cheshire in England and apparently the garden we've got used to be part of a farmer's field. So I assume probably all of the grass that's on the lawn, lawn in quotes, because it's just an undulating clay mass, is just naturally occurring. It used to be part of the field. There's one or two ornamental grasses which I'll probably show you as well. But if I can just show you a part that's been cut Look at my legs, there we go. So this is, hopefully from that you can just see it's just like a normal uh, lawn that you might get in any English garden. I understand our garden's larger than some gardens you get in England. That was the attraction of this house for me. When we moved down here from Edinburgh, my only real criteria was I wanted a house that had a decent sized garden. At the time we didn't know I was Aspie, but something I really like is coming in the garden, just being among nature and being on my own. Now, obviously you could go to a woodland or something else close by, but there's always a chance there'd be other people there. Whereas I can just come in the garden. I might work in the garden slowly doing something, but I'm on my own and I, I can just get lost in my thoughts and it's great. Anyway, I'm, um, I pulled up a website, random website, to find out some things about being boring so I could comment on those. I'll leave a link below if I remember to the website they happen to pull up, but there's various websites about it. And then while I'm talking about this, I'm going to look at some of the grasses in a garden. I've no idea how this is going to work out. So comments would be great. Uh, okay, thanks. I just need to switch the camera around to the other lens. Now I'm aware you won't be able to see on camera exactly how this grass looks because I'm not a proper cameraman. I thought if I put a white sheet behind some of them, we might better see them better, I'm not sure. Maybe I better freeze frame some of these. But this is right, we've just come out the back door, there's a little bit of a concrete area. But here's one type of grass. And then just over here, I believe this would be a different type. You probably can't see the colours. I'm sorry about the sunlight and everything that's going on. It's probably wrecking any colour things here. What I may do if I remember, is take uh, cuttings of some of these grasses and line them up afterwards and try and take a photo of them. This, I assume this is a type of grass. This is obviously an ornamental one because it was put in what at one time was probably a nice flower bed. Now I'm very happy with having our garden very wild and doing its own thing. I know my wife would like it to be like an ornamental English garden, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't bother me and certainly the effort to do that is not worth it at all for the reward. I'm just happy being out here. And my wife's not really that interested in putting in all the effort herself. Here's the ornamental one again. I assume this is the same type here. We do have lots of nettles and brambles, but that doesn't bother me in the least. We've made nettle soup before. 
So this is a some sort of black grass down there in amongst the nettles. Here, this would be an ornamental grass because it's in what was once a flower bed. So we've had nettle soup before, we've got a good supply of nettles. Nettle soup is very nice if you ever get the chance to try it. I'd like to recommend it. Now, maybe some of the grasses I show you are repeats of other grasses on the video. Anyway, I'm supposed to be talking about being boring, not grasses. So I'm, I'm trying to do two things at once here. Well, several things. I'm trying to walk around, trying to look at the grasses, trying to get them in shot, and also trying to talk about being boring, which is the whole point of this. So the first thing, boring people can have unbalanced conversations. So what this is talking about is a boring person either does an awful lot of talking or they do an awful lot of listening and hardly contribute anything to the conversation. Now I'm not talking about obviously where somebody, their role is as a speaker, like a teacher or something or a pastor, but in a normal conversation in a room between two or more people, if somebody absolutely dominates the conversation and doesn't let other people speak much, that might be a sign that they're a boring person. Equally, if somebody just likes listening and never contributes anything, doesn't ask any intelligent questions, maybe that's a boring person. Now, there are sometimes you may be very happy listening and you have nothing to add and that's fine. There's no point talking for the sake of it. But on the other hand, you would expect most people to be able to have something to contribute. Oh, look, I've just seen there's that tall one again back there. I suspect that's ornamental. Maybe it's natural then. That would seem a bit of a strange place to put it. Or maybe it's naturally been spreading. After this, I might try and add up all the different grasses I found, but no doubt there'd be more grasses. We get lots of animals in our garden as well. We have uh, oh, loads of different birds. What birds do we have? We get mallard ducks sometimes, wild mallard ducks, I assume. Sometimes see uh, heron because there's a pond next door. We get coots. Uh, I think, yeah, I see a bird of prey recently flying through the garden. Obviously you get lots of rabbits, we get foxes. There's a good variety. No doubt if we had a really nice lawn, we might get slightly fewer animals. I think this grass is called Yorkshire Fog. And here I am rambling, I'm supposed to talk about being boring. Okay, so that's... So, uh, I was saying about unbalanced conversations, Aspies can absolutely monologue. You get me or any other Aspie talking about something we're interested in, we can just keep talking and talking and talking. And because we don't pick up on body language and facial cues, you might be incredibly bored and we don't realise that you're incredibly bored. So we just keep talking. And because you've not said the words, I'm bored, we just assume you're interested, so we keep going. So if you're with an Aspie and you're not interested, don't be frightened to say, I'm not interested. Like my wife will very happily say to me, I'm not interested in that. So when I said about, isn't it amazing how many different grasses we've got? She wasn't the least bit interested. So that was that conversation dead, but at least that was better than her listening to me rattle on for five or 10 minutes about something that she really doesn't care about. Okay, next thing. Boring people can't tell if others are engaged in the conversation. That is true for an Aspie. We, or certainly for myself, I don't know if somebody's engaged, if they're listening. Sometimes I'll say something. <laughs> so here's a nice bit of irony for you. <laughs> I just said Aspies can't tell if somebody's engaged if they're listening. And at that point, somehow the camera stopped recording. <laughs> and it was another two or three minutes before I realised. <laughs> so even the camera got bored and stopped listening. So anyway, I'm going to go back to where I think I was in the garden and in the conversation and see if I can carry on from there. Well, I think we were somewhere around here, trying to look at different grasses. We've got, I think I may have mentioned, I don't know if it's in the bit that's cut out, we've got lots of bramble as well, which is good if you like blackberries, and we do like blackberries. That's probably not a very clear bit of grass there. Anyway, we don't know when other people aren't listening. If we don't pick up on the facial cues, and we don't in the body language, we don't know if they're listening, we don't know if they're interested. So it's fine to say that you don't know what's going on. Yeah, so we can't tell if other we can't always tell if other people are engaged or not at all engaged. This is some sort of bamboo there, by the way, which is obviously bamboo is a type of grass. Obviously, bamboo looks the same all year round. The um, a lot of this grass, when it's cut short to an untrained eye, like 
obviously myself, it all looks the same. It's just a load of short green stuff. If I come around this side, it's a bit clearer. But um, I guess somebody knows these things. But yeah, but if you've got a, some grass in your garden, maybe take a short area of it, let it grow tall, let it go to seed and see what type you've got. You, if that sort of thing might interest you, certainly any Aspies might be interested in just seeing what happens. Now we've got, oh, see if I was a good cameraman, I could get some good focus shots here. This is, clearly these aren't going to be in focus, some of these things. But the point is you can hopefully see there's lots of different grasses. Now this one here, I don't even know if this is a grass. So if anyone's watching this and you know, I'd quite like to know that the leaves are very thick on this, but I can't see it ever flower. So I'm, I'm not sure anyone would ever plant this intentionally as an ornamental thing, but as a plant on its own, it's all right. Okay, boring people can't make others laugh. That's number three. Okay, that might be true. A boring person may not make people laugh unless it's accidental and it's because they said something silly. But just because you don't make people laugh, that doesn't mean you're boring. But it's true that a boring person probably wouldn't make people laugh. Now, people often laugh when I'm talking, but I know some of the time it's because I've said something they consider to be inappropriate. So oh, you can't say that. And they start laughing. It's like, well, I was only saying it was true. It's like, oh, yeah, but it, you might hurt so and so's feelings. Like, yeah, but do you agree with it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true, but you can't say that. And it's, it's a crazy world. So anyway, apparently, if you don't make people laugh much, possibly you're a boring person. If you do make people laugh, then maybe you're not boring. Boring people never have anything to say in conversations. We probably all know people that rarely say anything. If there's a conversation going on, they just, they just don't add anything new. And through life, look at that, we've got some nice buttercups. Some people think buttercups are weeds, but I think they look nice, so I'm happy to let them grow. In life, we, we hear things, we learn things, and we should be able to remember them at times we need to in a conversation and bring them back up again. Apparently that's difficult for boring people. I don't think Aspies are generally guilty of this. Certainly I'm not. I've Just because of the way I've been created, I tend to remember an awful lot of things I hear. So I could hear a conversation about rabbits, let's say, something random. Ten years later, there's another conversation about rabbits, and I can, can contribute because I heard something, and I didn't even know I was really listening beforehand, but it's stuck there somehow. So uh, I, I've always got something to say. I guess I just never know when to stop saying something. Okay, boring people always do things the same. Well, Aspie certainly do. I could happily have the same routine day after day, eat the same diet day after day. That in itself doesn't, I mean, that's just something for being an Aspie, but there'd be non-Aspies that do that as well. And the way I see it is I just, there's something I, I like, this works for me, so I just keep doing it. But also some people are very adventurous and they like going different places. So I'm not into holidays, but if I was, I could go somewhere, think, oh, that's nice. So I just go there every year because I found somewhere that's nice, whereas other people would like to go to a different place and a different experience every year. And that's quite a nice one there. Hope I can identify some of these grasses afterwards. Okay. Boring people don't have their own opinions. There are lots of people I meet in life that cannot form an opinion. They can regurgitate someone else's opinion. But if you ask why do they think that, they can't back it up and they don't know. And it's because they've not formed it. They've heard someone else say it, maybe an authority figure. But oh, I don't think you can see it on the camera. There's a damson fly here. Yeah, I doubt that's going to come out at all. I've seen a few damson flies in the garden today. Uh, yeah, they can't, they can't form their own opinion and they don't know why they have certain opinions. Oh, this is true for anything, whether it's why did they buy a certain car? Why did they, why did they buy a certain type of shoe or political things? Why would they vote or not vote for a certain political party? They might say, oh, so-and-so is really, really good. So-and-so for president or prime minister. Oh, what, what policies do you like? Oh, yeah, but the other side's rubbish. Yeah, but what do you like about so-and-so? Oh, no, they're really good. And they're, it's based on nothing and they, they just cannot form opinions for themselves. Boring people don't know how to tell a good story. That may be true, but I think you could get people that are very interesting that can't story tell. I'm just going off a list, remember. And other people, they could talk about anything and they're interesting. 
So certainly a non-boring person could probably talk about most concrete. People may not be interested in concrete and how to mix concrete and different types of concrete. A non-boring person could probably keep you riveted for 10-15 minutes about concrete and you think, wow, that was brilliant. And just looking to see if there's any more types of grass. I do like fern, but fern's obviously not a grass. I've probably missed a fair number of grasses out here. Like I said, our garden does look like a complete mess to some people, but I like it. We've got this is uh, we've got Tayberries in this area, and we've got there's some gooseberries over there. We've got raspberries, we've got loganberries, lots of different fruit trees. It's a, it's a great garden. I really like it. Okay, I think that will do for the grasses. There we go. I think that'll do for the grasses. I'm just going to switch the camera around to the other side and finish the boring conversation. I certainly hope all this comes out all right. Uh, <laughs> right, boring people don't have anything new to add. Uh, again, okay, a lot of people don't have anything new to add, but that's okay. This is nice sitting by the grass, by the way, I like this. I'm so, so pleased I'm not hay fever. A lot of people in this country suffer from hay fever, but it's never been an issue for me. If it did, I guess we'd have shorter grass. Anyway, a lot of people don't have anything new to add. That's quite possible. But again, I've, I often have new things to add. I could, you could talk to me about anything. I'll soon pick up on nuances and I might be able to ask intelligent questions. I might be able to improve something. That's not unique to me. It's true for probably a lot of Aspies and a lot of non-Aspies. Boring. Boring people can't see things from other people's perspectives. That is very true for Aspies. I live life through my eyes. I don't live it through your eyes. How, how can I know how you see something or Unless you've had the same experiences as me, or, I, or I've had the same as you, I wouldn't. I would really struggle to see things through your eyes. So, silly example: I like pizza. If I meet somebody who doesn't like pizza, I can accept it, but I can't understand it. Because I'm getting hit in the face by grass now. Boring people don't include anybody in the conversation. As I mentioned before, we can totally monologue. And I know people that can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and, talk. and they are boring people. And so clearly conversation, normal conversation uh, in society, a big part of it is including other people. So it's some of it's talking, some of it's listening. Now for an Aspie, conversations are about the information exchange. So the information is the key. But I think for a lot of NTs, the information is secondary and the main thing is that somebody is talking with them and showing an interest in them etc etc but that's of no value I think to ask me certainly to me if you want to talk with me that's fine but make it interesting as for your body language don't care about that okay boring people have poor improv skills okay they might do but again you'll get some very exciting people that can't improv so I'm not sure that's a particularly good measure I am I think I'm good at improvising. I can be in a situation and things can change and I can come up with a solution quick. I can do other things. I'm sure a lot of Aspies can improvise fine. I'm guessing they can, I don't know. So just working through this list, I think a lot of these things don't tick the box for me and I think probably don't tick the box for a lot of Aspies. So this was maybe not the best list. I just pulled something up. Boring people speaking monotone. Yes, some boring people are, do speak in a monotone. Certainly, I know a lot of Aspies do speak monotone. But again, it's because they're just transferring information. They're not thinking about the inflections, etc. I know sometimes I can monologue and I, I'm probably very, I speak in a monotone voice as well. If I think of it, I can try and add some inflections. But because it's about the information, whether someone's monotone or not, it's not so important. I think monotone doesn't bother me so much as slow if somebody's a slow speaker that's annoying and if they're repetitive so like i've mentioned before like in church sermons sometimes somebody will say something two or three different ways that really does my head in. i don't like that at all boring people are constantly negative now i have been accused in the past of being a very negative person i don't see it as being negative what i am is there'd be a situation or a suggestion and I quickly scan through my head and I see what things may go wrong. So it's all about contingency because I like to know what might go wrong so I can prepare for what might go wrong. So then I can manage the situation better because I know if this, that and the other happens, I'm going to be all right. 
So because I then sometimes vocalize these ideas, it sounds like I'm being negative, but I'm not being negative. I'm just thinking what might go wrong so that I can mitigate for these potential things that might go wrong. And if somebody else is doing it, I don't find that negative. They're just looking for potential flaws. But absolutely, I'm guilty of being accused of being negative. But in my mind, I'm not really negative at all. Okay, boring people repeat themselves. I know I repeat myself sometimes, uh, as would somebody with dementia, I guess. The reason I could repeat myself, though, in the same conversation is I don't know if the other person's picked up on the thing I said. Maybe because I was boring and they stopped listening. But because I can't pick up on body language, I don't know if, if they understood what I said. So I might say, well, did you understand that? Are you sure you understood it? Or I may just say it again, which may well annoy them. Whereas if I was talking to an Aspie, I would know they got something. So they'd be like, yep, got it, yep. Yep, yep, got it. So like I said, when I've met Aspies before, I get on so well with them. We just communicate so well. It, it's great. And maybe two, if two neurotypicals watched us, maybe they'd find us very boring. Okay, this one I thought was interesting. Is it the last, it's the last one I've got on the list. Boring people are always bored. Now I'm rarely bored. I could be bored if I'm in a crowd or a social gathering. There's nothing I can do there. Like even if the occasion I've been to a theatre or a church that's particularly boring, I can still look at the patterns of the ceiling tiles or count the lights, I estimate the number of people, what percentage of chairs are empty, etc. If it's in a theatre, I see how many people are there, what the average ticket price is, try and work out uh, how much revenue they've got for that particular show, try and think about the staffing costs, etc. try and work out making a profit or loss for this show. So I can just keep thinking so I'm not bored and if I'm on my own it's great there's no chance of me being bored on my own just I can get lost in my own head thinking about different things if I've got pencil and paper that's even better I can write ideas down but I do know people that constantly say oh, I'm bored I don't know any Aspies that say they're bored though it's neurotypicals that tend to get bored and it's because <laughs> maybe they're boring people I, I can't imagine what it would be like to have a mind that is not constantly on the going if your mind's constantly going I think you're less likely to be bored. So I think that's probably it. That's not the direction the video I intended it to go, but that's the direction it did go. So I did this video because my wife didn't want to know about the grass in the garden. She said, make a video for YouTube. So hopefully somebody out there will find some of the grass interesting. Uh, if you're here for marijuana, then you'll no doubt be disappointed. It's nothing to do with that sort of thing. But again, I know that weed is a popular thing for Aspies because it helps in various ways. It's nothing I've ever done, though. I don't suppose I ever would, even if it was legal. It is legal now, isn't it, actually, cannabis? OK, anyway, um, I hope to see you another time. All right, this is, I've, I'm in our, one of our greenhouses now because it's a bit breezy outside and this wouldn't have worked outside. We've all got blown away. I think these are all different plants. I know some may look similar on the video, but when you look up close, they do actually look quite different. So these are just grasses that I got from the garden since filming a few minutes ago. And on top of that, we've also got, that's the uh, the bamboo grass we saw earlier. And of course we had the, this is the black grass as well. And there'd be some grasses I didn't fit on there because it's difficult to tell if they're different or not. But anyway, if anyone knows about grass and wants to leave any comments, that would be great. I hope this was at least a little bit interesting for some of you. Thanks.